Great rotation by Arizona. Three. That's off the mark as the shot clock was down to two when Jordan took the took the shot. 45-36 and the Wildcats to exacerbate Butler's problems have hit seven of 11 in this half. How about the defense by Arizona though, Vern? I mean, they did a lot of things there. When they blitz the pick and roll, the guy in the corner opens up and helps the guy rolling to the basket. It's just great coordination. All the rotations extraordinary. Gardner back to Walton off the dribble. Three. Nice extra pass too by Nate. Gives Arenas an open luck. Three before. Hey, America, Survivor's on this Wednesday. Don't miss America's most watched show, Survivor, on a special night. Wednesday at 8 o'clock, 7 central on CBS. 45-36, a four-point halftime edge for Arizona. And Nate Walton again extending. He was the help guy on the last trip. That time, great denial. And you can see it slipping right here yes, you for can. Butler. I mean, it's a matter, uh, you mentioned Miller being out. Uh, just You can't play this talent level and not have energy and substitutes. There's Brandon Miller getting a rest, 45-36. Well, the tide began to turn in the uh, last two and a half minutes of the first half. Of course, the Waltons were busy in the uh, tournament. Nate with Princeton and Luke here. Bill smiling, and why not? I'd be proud too. Just in the first two games with these two teams moving on. And then Michigan State and Fresno State will match up in the second half of this doubleheader. Zags are in a defense now, a zone. Block, a pull up. No good. Rebound underneath. Howard had it knocked away. And Round two, we have a halftime in Dayton, but we're playing in Kansas City, New Orleans, and Memphis, and we're about to bring you up to date on it all. Hi, everyone. Welcome to our studios here in New York and to Singular at the half. Greg Gumbel along with Clark Kellogg at halftime. Illinois looking every bit the top seed that they are in the Midwest with a lead over Charlotte. Rodney White, their star player for the 49ers of Charlotte. Three personal fouls, wasn't on the floor the bulk of that first half. And Illinois just came at Charlotte in waves up front and in the backcourt. And the winner of this game and the way it stands now, it's going to be Illinois would move on to meet Kansas in the next round. Meanwhile, at the Pyramid in Memphis, Indiana State and Gonzaga. What what a ball game this is. The Sycamores with a 51-48 lead coming up on the midway point through the second half. Let's join Ian Eagle and Jim Spinarco. Pull up pop doesn't go for Dickow. And with 11-34 remaining second half, Indiana State holding on to a three-point lead. And a whistle stops play. Mark Few wants to talk things over. Sleeper versus sleeper. It's the Sycamores in 48 lead here in Memphis as we take a look at our Nortel game summary. With 11.32 remaining. Rebounding, that has gone in the favor of Gonzaga, but it has not hurt Indiana State on the scoreboard. They've been able to knock down their long distance jump shots. I think Dick Cal's going to have to get more involved. Let's see if King Calvary can get some touches also on the blocks. Here's Gord on a back end. Kick out. Calvary knocks down a three. A lot of times you see the outside guys kick it to the inside guys. How about the high low there? It's a little bit of a reverse. Usually you see it go from high to low. That was low to high for a wide open jumper. 13 points for Calvary, and we are tied at 51. Out on the perimeter, a pump fake from Howard. Mentor trying to get it down low, and it's knocked away by Dickow. You don't see that too often. He usually delivers that. Even though it's a long pass, that's what he generally completes. His little reverse high-low. Gord up high, Calvary down low now. Kyle Bankhead, the freshman, gets rid of it. Dickow to uh, the rim. That may go against Gord, though, I believe. Was he moving? You got it. Zach Gord moving on that screen and a timeout. They turn it over with 10.46 to play in a tie ball game. Know exactly what to do and when to do it. Walton's one of them. Gardner will inbound for the Wildcats. Here's Richard Jefferson. Get it back in the hands of Gardner, who pops one for three. No good. Walton with the offensive board. Why not try it again? Another offensive board. They dominate 
It's, and rebounding. And Gene used those pads to good use, I might add. Look at his post up and a chance for three. Oh, they're saying on the floor. No yeah. goal. Pounding, huh? It's almost relentless right yeah, now. It is. Simple, easy baskets for Arizona. And now at the other end, Thad Mata, uh, the struggle. They've got to shoot it a little quicker, get involved earlier. Thad Mata's going to bring Brandon Miller and uh, Rylan Hangey back on the floor. And Archie and Cornette will rest. Edgerson tries to get free, and a whistle and a foul called underneath. Monday on CBS, what's worse than an annoying father-in-law losing your annoying father-in-law? The manhunt begins on an all-new King of Queens Monday on CBS. One of the few looks that Richard Jefferson's been able to get uncontested. He looks down at the rim on those jump shots. And Wildcats extend the lead. A 10-2 run in this half to complement the 11-2 run. Late stages first half that gave them the lead at halftime. And another Butler turnover. Just stepping up the D, getting after them, and not able to turn the corner. That's one of the dilemmas right now for Butler. Gardner guarded by Miller. Richard Jefferson. There's Woods. Nice screen on the other side. Look at this dump down by Jefferson. Rovers lay in the wood. They get an intentional foul, too. Memphis, 51-51, Indiana State, Gonzaga. Monday on CBS, what's worse than an annoying father-in-law? Losing your annoying father-in-law. The manhunt begins an all-new King of Queens Monday on CBS. Unfamiliar role as a favorite for Gonzaga. They are not used to having all eyes upon them where they're expected to win. They're actually wearing their home white jerseys for the first time in NCAA tournament play because they're a higher seed. And right before the game, we were talking to Mark Few about that thing. He said, you know what? We have won a lot of big games in our white uniforms. So here's a big game, and they have to start getting the ball to their scorers, Calvary in particular. Bulldogs, though, have turned it over 18 times. Indiana State ball inside and knocked away. Lock off penetration for a pull-up. And the rebound taken by Hernandez. We approach the midway point, second half, 51-51. Calvary into the hands of Dickow. They've been effective trying to get Gordon Calvary involved high-low. Here's the lob, look, looking for the lob well defended by Avery just then. Dickow looking to the interior. 9.53 to play, second half. All tied up at 51. Calvary on a kickout, Bankhead. Rims in on a three. That's where the supporters have to be willing to shoot shots because everybody in this building is thinking it's going to be Calvary and Dick out. It's the other three guys on the floor who are probably going to make important shots in this game for the, the Zags going down the stretch. And Gonzaga back in front, 54 to 51. Out on the perimeter. Howard, who scored his career high, 14 on a giveaway to Dickow. Up in the air, he gets mistakes. Here's Dickow, oh, straight into the rim for the University of Washington transfer. And he has gotten into the rhythm offensively here in the second half. Might be a time to talk things over. It's a steady, slow-paced game. Now, all of a sudden, it's totally back into the... So with about nine minutes remaining in regulation, the Bulldogs suddenly feeling their Cheerios. They lead Indiana State by a score of 56 to 51. Arizona and Butler have 948 to play in the second half. The Wildcats, the number two seed in the Midwest with the lead. Let's join Vern Lundquist and Bill Raptor. Arizona grabbing this game and controlling it now, leading by 15 points. Back to Rubbish off the front rim. Ball chased down. And into the hands of Edgerson. Great hustle, though, by Rovers. Here's Richard Jefferson. Pretty. They get it to Lauren Woods, kick it back outside. Luke Walton travel. And how about Jefferson? Uh, yeah, he is an extremely unselfish player. He could have easily taken the jump shot, getting Woods involved, and then Lauren making the good judgment, too. Unfortunately, Walton started the roll to the goal on the run out. Arizona up by four at the half, leading by 15 now. The winner of this game advances to San Antonio next week, and we'll have Notre Dame and Ole Miss in the second game here from Kansas City. Cornell, offensive foul. And who was it? 
a guy that they feel has improved defensively. Richard Jefferson getting the puppies in position to dominate, and they have coached him to become an excellent defender. So Arizona with a 51-36 lead as they come up on nine minutes to play in the second half. One other game to tell you about at the Superdome in New Orleans. Temple continues to lead the Florida Gators, 14-50 to play in the second half. Our next wave of games comes to you about 4.40 Eastern time. From the south, Fresno State against the top seed, Michigan State. Number six, Notre Dame against number three, Ole Miss in the Midwest. And in the south again, Penn State against number two seed, North Carolina. We will pause here and some of you will head to Memphis for Indiana State Gonzaga. Others back to Dayton for Charlotte and Illinois. It comes your way after this message and a word from your local station. Singular at the half has been sponsored by Singular, the wireless company that believes in the value of self-expression. The Arenas grabs it. Now Woods. Oh! Nope. Anderson grabs the rebound. And a foul called on Butler again. Uh, you can just see they gave all their energy early, but do you agree? Yeah, I, I sure do. And it's almost drained now. You play back to back, and well, day off in between, but two tough basketball games, and uh, the reality of the situation now starts to set in as you, you know, you got to go back and study. That's sort of the the hard part of this thing. Speaking of studying, here's Eugene Edgerson at the free throw line. Mm -hmm. Great story. Told us yesterday he came to Arizona out of New Orleans. And he was so conscious of the opportunity so many African American athletes had with the collegiate experience that he decided when he went to Tucson, he was going to get his degree in four years. He came in 96. He did get his degree, sat out last season because he wanted to complete it. There's his mom. And he is now pursuing a master's degree in education and he wants to become a kindergarten teacher for two or three years. Do you think he will put the fear of God? In those little kids, of course, he's such a gentle giant. St. Augustine is where he went to high school, a terrific high school. And he said his mom just checked in to make sure during his years at Arizona that he continued studying. He sure did. Back it comes. Here's Miller. And Ederson, all oh, the agony. Well, his mother encouraged him in his pursuit of education. I just, you know, the, the, he's got the retro look, and he says he, he adopted that out of respect for the traditions of this sport. Uh, we were teasing him about his knee pads yesterday. He's worn the knee pads since he was in high school. He said, I, I thought maybe for prayers, maybe, they would give it handy. Uh, but he, he said he dives and gets the elbow pads because he doesn't want to bruise the arms when he goes after him on the floor. He just gives Luke everything possible when he gets in the game. A lot of energy from the big fella. Uh, he had a marvelous first round game. And Brandon Miller with the foul. That's his first, but that is the eighth team foul on Butler. Now he wears these shoes too, Vern. I, 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 he must have been at a giveaway sale. Yeah. I mean, I, the color, I, I, I think they're from 10, 12 years ago. Bottom of the barrel. Barney's <laughs> basement. <laughs> Uh, but what is what a great attitude about the game, his teammates, and, and he was saying they got along. It wasn't a problem of getting, they loved what they really enjoyed being with one another. Just a matter of maybe rushing thing and the fans here from Arizona as well as his teammates. I mean that's what he brings. A lot of interest and dedication. Gilbert Arenas cans the free throw. Sometimes it's not all about the game. That's my boy. Keep it up. Second round action in the South region. 12th seeded Gonzaga leading 13th seeded Indiana State. 64 to 60 and Dan Dickow has turned it on here in the second half. Different story than what we saw in the first round matchup with Virginia. Against Virginia he lit it up in the first half with 21 in there. Now he's re roll reversal in the second half of this basketball game. Off the timeout. Gonzaga with a four point lead. Indiana State basketball. Mentor gets it inside. Conte met there and a foul as Hernandez came over to help. One thing that has impressed me with the Indiana State basketball team, when they've had problems and they need a score, look at this post-up move right here. He slips to the baseline side. Terrific delivery. He'll go to the line, shooting only 62% on the season. But the key thing is that they've gotten good looks, and the Zags have made that little run. Jabril Conte will hit some big free throws in the first round game, a win over Oklahoma. They knocked off the number four seed here in the South region. 
Indiana State now is a team 11 of 12 at the free throw line. Both teams shooting it well there. Both teams are really playing well, too, and answering each other's challenge, especially offensively. 64-62, Gonzaga in front. A battle of sleepers here in Memphis. Oh, got away spin. With, got, got, away. got away with that one just then. 19 points for the West Coast Conference Player of the Year, Casey Calvary. Indiana State grabbed some momentum in the first half, but Gonzaga, when they came back from the halftime break, they looked like a different team. Calvary guarding Marcus Howard. I think he has to get a little more active and try to challenge him off the dribble. Howard a career high 16 for the freshman inside. Conte on a kick out. Good luck for Howard. And rebounded by Conte. Reset. That's a big time traffic rebound. Wren playing with four fouls. And Mentzer can reset it as we approach six minutes to play in the second half. Winner will move on to Atlanta. Long three for Mentzer. Oh, is he ever stepping up? He has taken 11 shots in this basketball game, and guess where they've all come from? Long range. Fifth three-pointer for Michael Mentzer. He's got 15 overall. 66-65. Bulldogs. Calvary. Right, Looking to help. Here's Gord on the inside trying to use the body and leans in for two. Ren kind of cheated a little bit. Look at the double-team Calvary. That's how they started this basketball game. Running at Calvary. Nice recognition, though, by the big fella. He has six assists. Calvary had five in the first half. And Gord has 13. Gonzaga leads by three. Let's see if they get a good shot again. They've been very steady with getting good shots after buckets. Ren had it knocked away by Hernandez out of bounds. And the shot clock at 16. 5.20 left on the game clock. Michigan State, Fresno State waiting. They will play in the second half of this doubleheader as the Spartans try to continue their run to a title. Mention fading away, and Gord able to clean it up off the window. He really catches and shoots very quickly. Just a touch short because he was falling away from the basket that last trip. Nearly went down if it had another inch of height on it. Here's Hernandez on the perimeter. We hit five minutes left in Memphis. Calvary's almost playing like a point forward out there. I'm just looking at the situation, trying to pass the ball past people. Dick out, deliberate with 10 to shoot. Defended by Howard. Good job on him all afternoon. Off the double team, Mentor goes for the steal. Out of the corner, fake edge jumper. Rims out and knocked over the Calvary. Dick out, no look feed, baseline. And a deuce for Hernandez. And Rand had to step away just then also with four fouls. Could not be a factor in the challenge. 70 to 65, Gonzaga. Here's Rand way outside. Good cut by Block on a bounce. Conte trying to take the baseline. He stepped on it. Out of bounds, Jabril Conte. Indiana State turns it over and... Royce Waltman was saying that there was a push underneath the basket. It may have gotten him going in that direction. He may not be far off with that one right there. Conte, that's the reason he went that way. And you see that little hand inflection there with the push? I think he may have been correct on that one. 70 to 65. Gonzaga has control the inside. They tried the alley-oop. And a foul called as Calvary made that cut towards the bucket. They're going to get Conte on that call, too. What appeared to be pretty good interior position, too, with the lob. And Calvary goes to the free throw line. Conte with his fourth foul. Casey Calvary. He got the follow up bucket that put Gonzaga in front by one over Virginia, and they held on for the victory. 20 points for Calvary, and Conte will head to the bench. Replaced by Terrence Avery. Tough-minded on the inside, a soft shooting touch, and Calvary knocks down a pair. Gonzaga has their largest lead. Four minutes to play, 72-65. Indiana State has not been going towards the basket too much in the last few seconds, minutes. Let's see if they can go towards it now. Keelan Block on a kick out. Howard couldn't gather in cleanly. They're looking to bring the defense into the paint. Avery blocked on the inside by Cool. And here's Dickow slowing it down. He gets instructions from his head coach, Mark Few. This is where you want to be very patient now. The Zags have to run their sets, look for a little dump down or a backdoor cut. There's the lob, and Calvary is fouled. Good work by Gord. Gord continues to give good minutes as a role player out there. Calvary just 
holding his player down on the blocks. Well done, well executed. You gotta hit, knock back your free throws. And free throws for Calvary. CBS Sports coverage of the entire NCAA basketball tournament is interactive through Ultimate TV. Casey Calvary, 60% on the season from the free throw line. And he hits on the first, now has 22 points. And he is 4 of 5 at the line here today. Gonzaga extending the lead. And Calvary can't bring it to nine, but an offensive rebound for Hernandez. Dickow had an ocean, but they'll slow it down as we approach three minutes to play. Mark Few signals to get motion, move without the basketball, keep it alive. Try to get something going towards the basket if you can first, and then kick out for your shot. 7-0 run for Gonzaga, giving them their largest cushion, 73-65. Here's Bankhead. Taking a lot of time off the clock, down to 10 now. Calvary will put it on the floor. Penetration, the lead it. Casey Calvary is taking over. Big time player in their league, big time player this afternoon. He's taken over the last two or three minutes of this basketball game. Indiana State wants a timeout. The lead has hit double digits with 2.52 to go. Gonzaga up by 10. Gonzaga, second half, has shot the ball 67% from the field, and they now lead this game 75 to 65 with 2.52 to play. Don't count Indiana State out. They don't have any quit in them. Speaking with Royce Waltman before the game, he was happy that this team came out and had a good win under their belt the other day because he felt that guys like Menzer and Rank ended their careers in a high note. There's Menzer off the rim and things slipping away now from the Sycamores. They trailed by as many as 13 in the second half and came back to beat Oklahoma in overtime in their first round game. Keep in mind, Dickow has hit 10 out of 10 free throws, and that's why he had the basketball just then, and that's why he'll go to the line again. Dickow has 16 overall, and Gonzaga in the double bonus. Two free throws for Dan Dickow. Replace Matt Sanders. And I thought executed very, very smartly, especially using Calvary both inside and out. Indiana State not fouling with a minute 10 left. And Gonzaga will just continue to use clock. 10 to shoot. Dickow. Leading in for two. Big response by Dickow in the second half of this basketball game. He was a non-factor in the first. Brett Haver talked to Mark Few at the halftime and said he told him to just relax a little bit, go out and play your game, and guess what? That worked. A gorgeous finger roll gives him 20 as Calvary blocks the shot from Howard. And for Indiana State, what a season for Royce Walton. Their best run in the NCAA tournament since Larry Bird in 1979. Back-to-back -back tournament appearances for Indiana State, losing to Texas in the first round last year. But they are 47.9 seconds away from heading back to Terre Haute, Indiana. Gonzaga, 58% from the floor today. Red gets fouled, and he will shoot a pair. Well, coming up tonight on 60 Minutes, how does a Florida bean picker get to live like a king by going to law school and becoming one of America's richest lawyers tonight on 60 Minutes? Followed by an all-new touch by an angel, then Academy Award winner Louis Gossett Jr. and Robert Urich star, CBS Sunday movie, The Love of Olivia. It's all here. Don't miss it tonight on CBS. Jimmy Trico has checked in for Gonzaga, along with Jay Sherrill. Mark Few getting some of his reserves into the game so they can get a taste of NCAA tournament play with 42.4 left. Double team, they no quit though. Indiana State, well coached. And a potential third round matchup with the defending national champions, depending upon what happens later on today with Michigan State and Fresno State. Gonzaga has been called giant killers in the past. Well, that would be the ultimate giant. They've been called a lot of different things in the past. It's starting to shape up as winners right now. So we'll move Gonzaga on. The 12th seed advancing. Michigan State, Fresno State. Coming up. Hernandez, 10 points, making 11 now, seven rebounds. And Gonzaga will pull away. Calvary is done for the day. He heads to the bench, replaced by Corey Violet. 24 points for the senior, seven assists 
and four boards. That was the tempo setter early in this basketball game. Gore got, got some offensive efficiencies down the beginning of the game, and that was because Calvary, very unselfish, was passing the basketball early. Mentor a three, no. And rebounded by Hernandez, shot clock turned off. 20 seconds left here in Memphis. This is a team that was on the ropes a little bit, and they responded. Game was tied at 60, and Gonzaga ends the game on a 25-8 run. Make it three straight appearances in the Sweet 16 for Gonzaga. It's over at the Pyramid. They hold off upstart Indiana State, and they win it going away. 85 to 68. For a while there, you thought maybe the Sycamores were going to give the Bulldogs a taste of their own medicine with that underdog Cinderella roll. It was not to be. Chevrolet most valuable players of the game, Marcus Howard, the freshman 16 for the Sycamores. Casey Calvary, 24 points to lead Mark Fuse Bulldogs. So for Jim Spinarkle and Brett Haber, this is Ian Eagle saying so long from the pyramid in Memphis. 85-68 the final. Gonzaga wins it. More coming up with Greg Hubble and Clark Kellogg in New York when we return. They had really won two games in 62 and then got the victory in the first round here over Wake Forest. And that not as a keeper, don't you think? Oh, gosh, job he yeah. does with this team. Once again, Cornette, just solid shots he takes, you know, gets himself in position to do some damage. 2.20 to go. Walton, spin move, short with a shot, short with the first foot back, and gets the second. Size wins out, huh? Uh, he's got that ability to spin and deliver as well. Jordan. Walton after Arenas tipped it. And the second seeded Wildcats are headed to Texas. Well, Luke Walton's had a solid game. Yes, he has. And he's really contributed. Look at this guy blow by. Didn't finish, but that's what. You, when you can shoot like him, you just attract people. A little suckage, and then Gilbert able to put it down. And of course, his dad's a big Grateful Dead fan, right, Vern? And yes. those are paying homage as well. I guess you don't have any interest in the Grateful Dead, huh? Oh, of course I do. Oh, okay. Oh, of course just, I do. Just curious, just picking up these little details. Oh, my mind was. Uh, I, I, I was thinking about the four or five. Bill Walton would know the four freshmen. Well, I, I bet he would, too. Yeah. yeah. Bill is one of the great deadheads ever. Oh, I'm a Jerry Garcia. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Craig Gumbel, Clark Kellogg back in New York. There is your final score from the second round action in the South in Memphis. Gonzaga, an 85-68 winner over Indiana State. They'll meet the winner of Fresno State, Michigan. That game will tip at about 437 Eastern time in Memphis. Other games headed your way. Notre Dame against number three Ole Miss in the Midwest and Penn State against the second seed in the South, North Carolina. In Kansas City, Arizona, 69-52 over Butler. That one all but done, a minute 10 to play in Kansas City. In Dayton, Ohio, Charlotte trailing the uh, number one seed fighting Illini, 61 to 40, 10 and a half to play there. In New Orleans, it is Temple leading Florida, 60 to 46, the number three seed Gators, just three and a half minutes left. Let's send you there live and join Jim Nance and Billy Packer. The Temple Owls led by 20 at halftime thanks to 17 points by Quincy Watley, all in that first half. Lynn Greer has had incredible leadership at the point, and we'll be right back. The band touches us all with a little bit of Rossini in the background. There is a grateful deadhead. <laughs> Arizona advances. Notre Dame and Ole Miss will be next to play here in Kansas City. And they'll try. The winner of that game will uh, join Arizona. In the round, sweet 16. Can he scoot? No. I mean, it doesn't look like he's really taxing himself either as he gets that motor purring. Good slip. And Walton for two. Now, a lot of pressure outside. You're going to break down. Guys can step and go. Kick it back outside. And off the front rim. Well, the Butler Bulldogs are going to wind up with a season record of 24 wins and eight defeats. 
They achieved the second round game against the second seed of the Arizona Wildcats and held their own for the first half. Uh, just wonderful run. I mean, they yeah. played as hard as they could in that first half. Just not enough people on the bench, not enough energy. As a deep, talent laden Arizona team just stepped it up, made it difficult to dribble drive and get some open looks. Final seconds will evaporate here. The Wildcats down by five. Much of the first half were up by four at the end of the first 20 minutes of play and then had a 15 nothing run in the second half. They shoot 51 percent of the game and they had an edge of 39 to 20 on the boards. Pat Mata and Lute Olsen are Chevrolet players of the game. Laval Jordan for the Bulldogs with 17 points. And Gilbert Arenas, 15 points on 5 of 11 field goals. And he did a wonderful defensive job on Brandon Miller today. So the Wildcats advance. They win it 73-52. And we go back to Craig Gumbel in New York. All right, Vern, thank you. So Arizona joins Stanford, UCLA, and Southern Cal. Four Pac-10 team, teams now move on to the Sweet 16. Meanwhile, down in New Orleans, the Temple Owls continue to lead the third seed Florida Gators, 60 to 46, coming up on three minutes to play. Let's join Jim Nance and Billy Packer. Temple led by 20 at halftime, and the Gators got back within 13 early in this second half at 50 to 37. But it has really been Temple's game. They had told us yesterday to a man, we've got to take control of this game early. And just as they did against Texas, it happened here today against the finalist of a year ago, Florida. Well, uh, I'd have to say, if you're Billy Donovan and you go back and review this film, you, you'd probably say, or this tape, you'd probably say that this is as poor as my team has played the entire season. Give a lot of credit to Temple, but Florida did not come out with intensity on the defensive end of the floor at the start and really got themselves in a hole they've never recovered from. Haslam, hands on the back line. And that'll send him to the line for a one and one. Well, but, well we still have 248 to go. We can't advance anybody quite yet, but it looks like Temple's heading to Atlanta. Penn State, North Carolina, next on the floor here at the Superdome. You know, Jim, when I think back of these two programs and Temple's basketball, we talked about back in the 50s being good, even in the 40s being outstanding. You wouldn't believe this as uh, much as Billy Donovan has done with this program and Lon Kruger right before him and Norm Sloan before that. 1987 was their first, first shot time. into the NCAA tournament. Isn't that amazing? 72 years yep. of competition in basketball and they never made it in the NCAAs until that year. Right. The 72nd year. That year, they made it to the Sweet 16. That was Norm Sloan's club. They beat NC State, Purdue, and Syracuse. Vernon Maxwell was awesome in that NCAA tournament. 28, 24, and 25 points in three games. And lost that, to Syracuse. And then they lost to Syracuse. Lost to Syracuse. Right. Yep. And that was that a, went that, on to the Final Four right here. Yep. Billy Donovan uh, took a team, Providence, as a player to the Final Four that year in 87, that same first year the Gators ever made it to the exactly. big dance. And and John Cheney that particular year, he had a pretty good club too and did not make it to the Final Four, something he has never done. In 87, he had a club 32 and 4, 17 and 1 in the Atlantic 10, and they were Atlantic 10 champs, but they couldn't get to the Final Four. Nate Blackwell, who is now his outstanding assistant, was the AT Player of the Year that year. An outstanding one, but uh, John Cheney's had so many close shots at getting there and not quite able to get it over the hump. He really made a, a big attempt to bring Billy Donovan as a player to Temple. Paid a home visit and talked with Billy's father. Billy had a game that day at St. Agnes High School and uh, thus didn't really get a chance to sit in on that visit with the coach. But uh, his dad wanted him to go there. He liked Temple. He liked Coach Cheney and wanted him to go there. And uh, Billy decided to wait a little bit. And uh, it ended up being Providence. You now John Cheney's one of those guys, if you ever played for him 20 years later, you'd be telling stories about things that he did, not about basketball necessarily, but about life experiences. He just one of those experiences that you'd have uh, probably like uh, nothing you could ever have any time in your life. Tonight on, special guy. he is a special guy, and I love his philosophy, what oh, yeah. he does. He's amazing. Tonight on 60 Minutes, Another whole new episode coming your way, followed by Touched by an Angel and the CBS Sunday movie, 
for love of Olivia. It's all here. Don't miss it tonight on CBS. Greer, five of five from the line. And that gives him now 31 in a row in the last four games. The Florida contingent. Billy's wife, Christine, it has been a very trying year for this team, and especially for the Donovan family. We lost a child back in November to stillborn nine months into the pregnancy and nobody even guarding green on that play it's an easy shot but again just trading baskets will not work and that has been the case uh, since halftime for florida those were the first bench points of the game from either side billy donovan signed five years ago uh, next week to direct the florida program and he was saying this year it has been the most trying and the hardest season of his life, but uh, basketball-wise, the most rewarding to see us undermanned because of injuries and watch the kids adjust. He said it's been a spiritual thing, very moving. We've been a family, and uh, you know we've been a banged-up team all year. And one time they still reached number five in the national rankings, the highest in school history. He didn't, you know. The way he's handled his personal adversity hasn't been lost on anybody in, in Gainesville. And uh, he said that he thinks it was important for his players to watch how he handled it because when it hits them in their lives and it hits everyone at some point, these kids will someday later in life be able to say, this is how my coach handled adversity. And they'll be able to well, learn be, from that. He will definitely be back. And this guy is a program builder, an outstanding young coach, Teddy DePay again, just trading baskets. That won't work. As a matter of fact, coming into today's game, Billy at eight and two was only behind Tom Izzo in terms of winning percentage of guys that have coached ten or more games in the NCAA tournament. So it, only Izzo was ahead of him. You mean he had a better percentage than Mike Shashevsky? Yeah, you got into that one the other day. <laughs> Mike sitting there. You with killed me for that. I gave you that nugget the other night. You killed me for that. Fifty-three and fourteen, I guess Mike is now at fifty-two and fourteen. Penn State, North Carolina will be coming up here uh, one half hour after the conclusion of this one. Plus, some will see Fresno State taking on the one seed in the South, Michigan State, or Notre Dame against Ole Miss. Ole Miss, the team to beat Florida in the SEC tournament. Jim, you know what's amazing? When you look at the brackets before all this starts, you say, hey, here's where the good games. Boy, look at these matchups. I would have thought that the eight teams here in New Orleans would put together the most competitive games in any bracket that, that, that I've seen. And here we have had actually very poor games in terms of excitement and competitiveness. You never would have believed it. We've got one more left. So let's hope that North it's Carolina coming. It's on, <laughs> it's on the way. It's on the way. Promise you. We have had not a single game here decided by uh, less than 10 points. Parker. And we're not going to see one here either. Wadley's free throw a moment ago was his first point of the second half. Uh, it was really interesting. Billy Donovan saying to Nelson, foul, but not him. And at this point in time, Brett Nelson getting a real education of what it's like to be as good as people say you're supposed to be. Florida can have a fine team next year, but uh, between the injuries and the two defections early to uh, the professional ranks, this club is a long, long way from being the club it was last year at this time. This Wadley has really made uh, such an impact in these two tournament games, dictating the really the, the games with his first half play, both against Texas and Florida. 20 points against Texas in the first half Friday. Blowout lead at the half, 17 in this one. And the other thing, uh, because of Temple's play, the crowd never was able to nope. get this game. Wadley with another rebound and saying, I'm going nowhere with this ball. We're just going to let this thing wear down. Billy Donovan drops back. He's not even pressing here. Florida season low in terms of uh, points, 61. They won't get there today. Temple will hold them below that, it look, looks it, like. Isn't it interesting, you know, the plan of attack by Florida now is to trap. But if you don't execute with effort, I don't care what the plan looks like, it's not going to work. And there is no effort out there right now on the part of Florida. Haslam's going to put this one away. And Haslam, he keeps running. One minute remaining. And then Greer just puts him to sleep with his candy play. Hard to pick a MVP from this Temple team. So complete, a team effort lied off the feed from Greer. Now you got Greer and uh, Wadley. Greer's one assist away from having a double-double. 20 points, nine assists. Wadley has 21 points and 10 rebounds. Just been outstanding. And there again, just throwing up shots. 
the Florida players have to be very very disappointed and I think the SEC as well probably very disappointed in Florida's play today Jim oh, no doubt SEC uh, can toe champ uh, in the regular season uh, back to back years and they would had only one in their 80 year history one title they've done it two straight at least had a piece of it I'm really shocked by this performance or the lack thereof to be quite honest with you I thought this would be a very competitive game. Two teams, though, that really had very little to work with as far as benches. Yeah, but for Temple, a multitude of reasons. Temple only dresses nine. Florida dresses ten. But in fairness to this, Temple, the way John plays with his own defense, and he never gets involved in pressure. It's easier for him to play at all. That Wadley. sets the pace right there. Wadley says goodbye to New Orleans with a three at the buzzer. Well, seconds to go, and the Gators go down to the Temple Owls by 21. What a terrific job by the Temple team, but in particular, a backcourt that played as well as you can play for two games. Billy Donovan has to be very disappointed, but he'll gear it up, I guarantee you, starting tomorrow morning. John Cheney has done it again. He has uh, coached his Owls to the Sweet 16. They last did it back in 99, and now we've lost two of last year's final four teams. Wisconsin went out in the first round, and Florida, again, in the finals a year ago, out today. North Carolina, final four team of a year ago, is next on this floor against Penn State. The MVPs here will give it to the senior, Wadley, with 24 and 10. Matt Bonner, a double-double for the Gators. Temple trailed for only three and a half minutes. In the two games here in New Orleans, great stuff by the Owls. They are moving on to the Sweet 16. Greg Gumbel in New York is coming up next. Welcome once again to our studios in New York, everyone. Greg Gumbel along with Clark Kellogg is another example. You just never know. The Florida Gators were just sailing along, and all of a sudden they hit the Temple Owls like they were a brick wall. They certainly did. Temple was outstanding, and their two wins this weekend, they've actually led throughout, with the exception of maybe a few minutes. And their defense is always talked about, but the key to them being successful is offensive play, and they've gotten it the last two games. So another final four team goes down the tubes. The Florida Gators fall 75 to 54, and out there in New Orleans, Bonnie Bernstein had a talk with Temple coach John Cheney. Congratulations indeed. John Cheney and the Temple Owls headed for the Sweet 16. They will await the winner of North Carolina against Penn State. Here's what's still to come here on CBS from the South. Fresno State against the top seed Michigan State. Number six Notre Dame against number three Ole Miss in the Midwest. And Penn State going up against the second seed in the South, North Carolina. We'll take a time out here and we will continue with more as we travel the road to the Final Four. Tonight on 60 Minutes, how does a Florida bean picker get to live like a king by going to law school and becoming one of a Followed by an all-new touch by an angel, the Academy Award winner Louis Gossett Jr. and Robert Urich star in the CBS Sunday movie. It's all here tonight on CBS. Under four minutes to play, and Illinois has not looked back. They had a 15-point cushion at halftime and have just padded that lead throughout the entire second half. The Charlotte players continue to hustle. There's no quit in them, and they're right now they're dejected, but they're not they're gonna let it all hang out until the end. Griffin inside. Basketball. Now the 49ers Griffin. began this year 0-3 in the conference and fought hard to get back into. Gonzaga, a winner in the South at Memphis. The Bulldogs win at 85-68, their third straight trip to the Sweet 16s, and each time as a double-digit seed. And Casey Calvary and Dan Dickow got it going, especially in that second half, Greg. Played, out, played outstanding basketball. All right, Clark, in Kansas City, Arizona over Butler by a score of 73-52. to Lou Olson's Wildcats, the number two seed in the Midwest and playing like it. Charlotte and Illinois, the fighting Illini, 
are down to 241 before they move on to the Sweet 16. They are leading Charlotte 75 to 53. And in Dayton earlier today, the Kansas Jayhawks all over Syracuse 87 58 was the final score. Once again, uh, Kansas over Syracuse, the score 87 to 58. And we'll take a timeout and have more for you after this message and a word from your local station. Charlotte had challenge three. For complete tournament coverage, go to cbs.sportsline.com. 16% for Charlotte and 40% from downtown. And that's right. To the Riverwalk and San Antonio, the Fighting Illini fans will make their way to Texas. Beautiful sight, really. Home to the Final Four back in 1998 when Tubby Smith got that first NCAA championship at Kentucky. Jamon Brown trying to work mano a mano gets the roll. Basketball Charlotte has gone to its bench now. Some of the younger players walk ons. Tolliver's come into the game. Number 25 D Tolliver senior from Garner North Carolina getting some minutes well deserved. Let's face the floor and look for an open shot or an easy drive. Open up the court, take the help defense away. We usually look for people who don't get many shots throughout the course of the season at this juncture in time. Loose ball to DeMond Brown. Off to the wing, Tolliver can't hit. Uh, but <laughs> Nate Mast was out of bounds, he was on the end line. Oh, they got the timeout, actually. He got the rebound and the timeout just to make some more substitutions. Get Griffin off the floor, Bradford, Harrington, and a standing ovation for those young men. Boy, did they play well. They deserve it at both ends of the floor. Metis Niparovicis, the uh, Lithuanian, is on the floor now for Charlotte. Melton. Brett Melton. Brett Melton. The freshman got in. He's a star player for the future. We'll get plenty of uh, air time next year for the Illini. 79-55. Was a top 50 recruit in last year's class. On the wing, Niparovicius. Three-point basket. Niparovicius. 79-58. Every time it seemingly you see a, a young uh, European player come on the floor, he launches a three and hits it. Isn't it amazing? 79-58. Greg Gumbel, Clark Kellogg back in New York. Here are the three games still to come this evening here on CBS. As you look at the lineup, Clark, what surprises are in store? Well, I think Notre Dame, because of their balanced shooting attack, could give Ole Miss some problems. And if Fresno State is relaxed, they can actually compete quite well with Michigan State, I think. All right, Clark, we'll send everyone off to Memphis for Fresno State and Michigan State. Those of you headed for Notre Dame Ole Miss, we'll get you to your tip in Kansas City, and we'll send you to New Orleans for the tip of Penn State and North Carolina. It's all coming up right after this. 79-61, our final score. Let's take a look at the Midwest region bracket here in Dayton, Ohio. What an outstanding matchup that will be when Illinois and Kansas meet. Flip it a coin. Yeah. Our Chevrolet players of the game for both teams. Joby Thomas, who played with a lot of heart in the second half. 14 points, three boards. Brian Cook, 19-8. Eight. eight solid rebounds. They really took Guevara. And uh, the outstanding freshman Rodney White out of their games en route to the demolition of the 49ers of Conference USA. 79-61, our final score.
So for Rick Patino and Spencer Tillman, Tim Brando saying so long from Dayton. This has been a presentation of CBS Sports, home of the men's NCAA basketball championship.